Hey, what's up, guys? This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sarfucci, and I'm here at the shop, and I got some more rods in. Like I said, guys, they're they're finally starting to roll in. Here's a red and black one. Let me make sure y'all can see it. Or actually, you know what? Let me just do a zoom up of them. It'll probably be easier. So there we go. Start there. There we go up. Here's the wraps on them. Very cool, man. Very, very cool. There we go. So that's already four rods in this week, guys. Like I said, they are starting to roll in. This will take us down to eight rods that we currently still owe customers. Yes. Light at the end of the tunnel is there, guys. Literally, eight more of y'all are waiting for the rods. And like I said, we went to the farthest dated ones and we've handled all of those. And now, like I said, we just got eight more. We'll be completely caught up after that. At which point, we're gonna start deal bringing the rods in so that way when you come in, the rods will already be here waiting. You will no longer have to wait for a rod to be built if we have it in stock. If we don't, well then we can put it in there and it'll flow into the rotation and it should be nowhere near the amount of pain and suffering that we've had to go through together as a family on this one. So again, guys, this is awesome, awesome, awesome. We've already made phone calls and we got happy customers knowing that they've got some rods in place. So it is very, very cool. So, yep, there you go. Now you can see the rest of the work we're doing. All right, guys, so I just missed my introduction. I was opening boxes and this is one of them there's a thousand hooks in this box right here yep this hook is actually similar to a 13 knot a 15 knot or a 16 knot depending on the manufacturer you get it from so yeah we are going to be going through a major major leader leader setup we also got back this raptor in orange the gentleman who caught it down the beach brought it in and was worried about the bearings and so forth. So I went ahead and told him to send it back, have it reworked. And he does have video footage pulling it in out of the water and stuff like that. So um, this Raptor or this reel was actually having clicker damage. As it was being reeled in, it was backing off and it was disengaging itself. So we sent it in and had that worked on. So very nice, good to go. They also replaced the handle. And that's the other thing they'll do when they replace anything on the reel they normally send the extra parts back just to show proof that they did work on it so very good now Got a, got a lot of stress on my mind It's a nice day to go Yeah, I got a line I'm a caller The whole team Hey, what's up guys? So, what I'm doing here is I'm putting on the swivels on the hook section of the cast out leaders that we're going to be building Since I got 10,000 hooks in I, or 8,000 Sorry, not 10,000 8,000 hooks in I'm going to be building a lot of leaders So, First, got to get these crimped or put crimps on them. I'm again using the 1.9 double mini sleeve, and I'm using the 450 pound swivels that are stainless steel to connect the back end of the cast out leader. So, here we go as I start rocking and rolling it. All right, guys, so I've got all the sleeves on, on this back end of there with the swivels. Now it's time for the next step of crimping. Oh, yeah. This is going to take a while because each sleeve has to be crimped three times to get all the way across. And again, with coated cable, guys, or any kind of cable, you crimp the sleeve all the way across to ensure the best bite on it to ensure it doesn't slip on you.
All right, guys. So I'm coming down to the last bit of these bike sections for our cast out leaders. I'm crimping up the last bit of it, and then this will lead to the next step of adding the hook on the other side. And I'm pretty sure y'all noticed that we have put a single sleeve on these as because they are going to be cast out from the beach. And we have pulled in eight footers by just grabbing the leader and pulling them over the bar with just the hook and line. So it will work on it and definitely trying to keep an eye on the weight of the leader because a lot of these guys will be casting these leaders out so to ensure that we get maximum amount of diff distance we are watching all the tackle that we put on it we're trying to make it as aerodynamic as possible for them to be able to do this now we do have another leader that's going to be coming out and it's big it's going to be specific for casting leaders on that I will be doing a video later on, probably next week, and also using the different weight classes of monofilament. The most popular weight class is 400 pound test. However, I've got some 300, I got some 250, 200, and 400, and I want to go and select a few of those and do some distance casting with them, just to see. Like I said, I'm all, we're all about trying to give our customers the biggest advantage over the other shops by producing gear that's going to be the most effective again a lot of people look at it well i'm shark fishing ain't the heaviest heaviest ain't always the best guys as we have talked about in years past of how people got bit off on the coated cable or the thickness of the cable we are ensuring that none of our leaders when they are actually hooked up will cut off because they're being bit and there you are everything's crimped up right there on the swivel side now it's time to go ahead and start attaching the hooks on the other and there's a lot of leaders right there guys that's a lot of leader so let's go ahead and get this next step going casting a variety of leaders into distance casting so that way we could see how much of a difference you can gain by changing up the format of the leader so instead of using 600 pound coated or 480 pound coated or even 250 pound coated here we go guys we are going to be attaching our sleeve here it's a double mini 1.9 onto this 480 pound cable and you're also going to watch how we insert the, the hook, cable into the hook it's always in one direction and we're going to show you right here how i'm inserting the cable towards the hook side and out the back side that's to ensure that when a fish does get hooked up with it that it's going to get a good hook into the fish whereas if you did it the opposite way it wouldn't even hook the fish at all now that's a touchy subject that i'm going to touch on because a lot of people always blame the hooks that it didn't get this it didn't get that and i mean guys at the end of the day it is fishing these hooks are designed to you know rotate into the shark's corner of the mouth or even the fish and you know they say well when the shark got away that you know the hook failed or this and that you know a lot of times if the hook doesn't get proper penetration a lot of times it's because the barb on the back side is not um, doing what it needs to do and or it's too big a lot of times too that when the hook does set in it doesn't get a huge bite into the fish and you know it's the luck of the draw guys I, I tell you what I mean I know there's guys that firmly believe that certain hooks will always get this always 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 well you know what there's a lot of times where they miss a lot of fish too you know what I mean it's not always um, you know a hundred percent hookup ratio every single time a fish looks at it now I can tell you that I've had dozens upon dozens of sharks that came up and sniffed my bait and got hooked in the nostril you know that's them they found the bait but they don't know exactly where it's at and as they're sniffing around you know they bump into the bait and get hooked right in the nostril i mean we've caught i'm telling you guys dozens upon dozens of those easily and it was because of the proper hook placement that we had on the bait now with that being said what if a big shark was doing that and got hooked right there and the amount of pressure they were putting on the the fish trying to get it in quickly ripped that hook out of that section you know it's 
you got to understand that a lot of guys are trying to put an extreme amount of pressure on these sharks which they believe they have to because they're trying to get the shark in as quickly as possible in, in order for it to survive that is you know a, both a give and take because even guys that have put the amount of, of crazy pressure on a fish and they still you know didn't make it they and these guys will spend maybe 10 to 20 seconds get the fish to the beach and while they're filming you know cut the cut the cable they don't even try to remove the hook or cut the hook real quick turn the fish around and get it back into the water because they're afraid it's gonna die on them like that there's a lot of variables that can't always be taken accounted for and one is the health of the fish before the hookup you know sometimes these sharks are sick or are hurting already and then when you hook into them you know it's because they you know they uh they were looking for something to eat and it was a quick easy meal for them so it is there's a lot of things to look into guys and like i said without a camera on the, ca the leader itself and seeing what actually happened during the fight you know it's all estimation or a best guess at most um so i want you guys to know that we are doing the best we can when we do create a leader to give our customers that use the leaders as the long as it has a 13 knot circle on it to pull in the fish all the way to the end you know what i mean but you got to remember guys a lot of people are setting their rods and gear up just to hook up a fish or a shark you know that's their primary goal they're not looking at the long game and the long game is to get the fish in quickly so that way it can be released and or say for tuna fishing that it they don't fight the fish for so long that they burn the fish out and when it comes to eating the meat it's a poorer quality again it, there's so many variables to think about you know fighting a fish how long do you really want to fight a fish um it's gonna be tough guys it really is there's so many so many things to think about and you got to really ask yourself these serious questions i mean what are you willing to commit to and what's going to be that the the, uh, the final outcome to that commitment so for me guys as y'all see on the channel when i fight a fish i try to get it in as quickly as possible i try not to spend too much time on it on the beach or on the pier and try to get it in the water as quickly as possible so that that means i stage my gear so that way as soon as we pull it up we can walk it over get it into the uh the uh, measuring stick or whatever we have there and then get it back in the water as quickly as possible. my YouTube channel. <laughs> ah, uh, okay. Now, the yeah, other... It's, it's the other, invitation only. The, the other half of that token is, I mean, we can get you all set up and everything, but you can't catch fish if you don't go fishing. I know, that's a, that's exactly right. Well, I haven't had any time, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Neither have my guys. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. We've been working very hard for the last few years. So, we're kind of looking forward to a little free time. Yeah, I think I think once we get through Sharkathon, I'll probably treat my guys again to another fishing trip. Cool. Last time we went out to Goose Island, and we uh, we're seeing who can catch the biggest fish and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Did a whole day trip out there. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. My grandpa used to make these when he was little. When I was 
little. The weights? The weights. Mm -hmm. Those are all the blemished ones. Those we sell at a discount. Oh, really? Yeah. So that way, uh, because obviously we already got material invested into it. Right. Wow. Yes, we they could. They just as good. They just yeah. don't look pretty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. As long as you're not going to, I mean, in Sandy Surf, I mean, they all work fine. They, they, people like those when they're fishing in an area where they're probably going to get loose. They're going to get loose and they're going to lose mm -hmm. them. So they don't feel so as bad. They feel so you bad know? when you lose them. Messed up weight. You know. Messed up weight and a, and a good weight. Yeah. Well, that and it's cheaper. We sell it by the pound rather than by the ounce. Gotcha. Everything that's good is up on there, and we sell it by the ounce. Gotcha. But everything right there. Only by the pound. Yeah. So are those for the sharks, buddy. If you don't want me asking. Yes, we're making uh, the shark casting leaders. Holy smokes. And uh, it's 480 pound cable. Go to cable. And so you're gonna catch a serious shark. We're trying for it. Yeah. I mean, how, how big of a shark are you looking for? I mean, what are you, approximately? Yes. <laughs> big. Yes, big. Yes. I mean, what kind of bait do you put to catch something like that? You know? Well, it, it's crazy because sometimes you can throw a shrimp out there and catch a shark. No way. Yeah. Done it. Done it. Uh, Thirty-six liters, right there. Looking mighty nice. 